What's going on filmmaking friends, Zach here from premiumbeat.com. In today's video, we are dipping into Adobe Premiere Pro and sinking our teeth into synchronizing four different cameras. I'm challenging myself a little bit in this process. I wanna try and see if I can synchronize the color, style, and look between four completely different cameras, that of a drone, a Sony a7 III, my cell phone, and DJI Osmo action camera. So between those four cameras, I wanna synchronize all the color profiles and looks so that it has a cohesiveness. I'm working on a documentary right now where I'm cutting in between multiple different cameras and I wanna see is it possible to keep it all similar and in that same flavor and show you guys how to sort of do that in that process. So let's hop into Adobe Premiere Pro CC. We're gonna play around with Lumetri Color and hopefully make these shots look a similar tone. So let's do it. So the first thing is you're gonna have all four of your shots available. So just to give you a bit of a glance into my timeline, we have the DJI Osmo, the DJI Mavic Pro 2 uh, footage here of like these beautiful epic misty skies. And the next shot is just some shot I filmed out of the window of a car. Uh, on my Sony a7 III, and then uh, my buddy Mo with uh, the Osmo, Osmo, Mo, Osmo, him surfing here. And then the final one is my mom in slow motion, and this was shot on my cell phone. So all four of these are obviously shot on different cameras with different color profiles and looks, and really it doesn't matter the color profiles because we're playing around with syncing them. So I won't go too far into what picture profile I use for these because they're all diverse and super different. And to be honest, I don't, for some reason, I'm a terrible shooter, cinematographer. I don't focus on this stuff all the time. Anyway, so the first thing you wanna do is apply a LUT. So what we're gonna do is go into creative. Now I use LUTs from a bunch of different filmmakers out there. Uh, I find that it's smart to apply a LUT that way you have some sort of cohesiveness now you don't have a LUT to work with like you haven't downloaded any from any websites there's some from premium beat that I'll add a link to in the description below you can also create your own which there'll be some information that'll provide in the description below as well but um, if you want to know the ones that I'm using for this I'm gonna be using Triune Films Cinematic Pack version one. I think that's their their thing. Again, there'll be a link to that in the description below. And that's been one of my favorites. They have a filter called Drive, which is like the drive look. And that'll be sort of our, our template base layer. So we're gonna start by applying that LUT. Now, it doesn't look exactly the way I want it to. So the first thing we're gonna do is adjust the intensity. Now, like with all LUTs, they don't, they're usually like super strong when you put them on. So I'm gonna lower this down to let's say, Let's try it at 40. Now again, each camera is gonna be a little different with this process. Now the next thing that we're gonna do is go into our basic correction and play around with these dials. These are some of the most important dials to play around with. Essentially, this is just to get the overall look. So I like to boost up the contrast. Now a lot of this stuff is a preference thing. Lower the exposure just slightly. Maybe boost up that exposure. Ooh, now it's getting a little blown out in these clouds. So let's see if we can lower down the highlights. And each of these shots is gonna be different when it comes to the basic correction, mostly because this is the fine tuning and tweaking. Then we're gonna get our temperature. Again, I kinda of want like a cool blue tone for all of this. So let's lower down the temperature to minus 25. Ooh, it's, it's chilly, it's winter. Um, minus 25 there. And then what we're gonna do is lower the saturation just down to about 95. So if we turn on and off our Lumetri color, Boom, and that's just with the basic LUT applied and then a, you know, doing some fine tuning. Here's where it gets super fun. The next thing that I want you to do is go down to curves. Now, if you have the latest version of Adobe Premiere or anywhere I think from 2018 onward, uh, you're gonna be able to do this stuff, which is your um, intense sort of curve playing. And uh, I have a full tutorial on this that's on uh, Premium Beat as well, which I'll add a link to in the description as well. Um, but essentially, and by when I say description, I mean into the blog post that's attached to this video. You're gonna have uh, a couple different controls through here. The first thing that we're gonna do is play around with our blue tones through our hue versus saturation. So we're gonna click onto this water over here. Boom, that's gonna open up the preferences for that. And I actually wanna boost the saturation up in the blues. And you'll you kinda understand why in a second. So let's let's just let's just give that a little extra juice here. And again, we can see what we've done by turning on and off our Lumetri color. Now the next thing that gets really fun is playing around with the hue versus hue. So we're gonna click the eyedropper tool again, 
click it into the water because that's gonna be a majority of blue within our shot. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna look, change the hue. As you can tell, if you drag this around, you can do some dramatic stuff. Now, I don't want purple water. So we're gonna make it go up into this kind of tealy type tone. I think that looks super sick. And then what we can do is these are different options you can play around with. I don't think there's much that we want to do within these. Um, for example, if we want to change like the how bright it is, we can definitely do that. Um, I find with lower end cameras, if you play around with this too much, you get like some artifacting that happens. So let's not play around too much with the Luma. Let's go back up now and just do so, sort of our fine tuning with the actual curves, which we're just going to apply a little bit of an S curve onto this. Now an S curve is basically where you make an in and out point at the top and bottom of this, and then just kind of drag it to create an S shape. And we'll just bring up the brightness just slightly. And again, this is obviously user preference. And then finally, I can go down to the very bottom, just do a tiny little, a little bit of vignetting. Uh, mostly I like to do a little bit of vignetting on drone shots because they're so wide and it's nice to sort of narrow your eyes in on something. So we can now check in the before and after of this drone shot. We go from like this flat sort of gray look to now this cinematic moodiness. Now we've customized a lot to sort of fit the style of the video that we're shooting. Next thing we're gonna do is find our Lumetri color, like our sort of preset that we put into the bottom corner down here, and we're gonna copy it. So by pressing Control C, we've now copied that Lumetri color preset. And then we're gonna go into our next shot, and by using paste, so Control V or Command V, uh, or Apple V, um, we can paste it, and whoa, we have this very dramatic, dark and moody shot. Um, that has similar color properties as this wide drone shot, but it's super contrasty. So to fix this very quickly, we can go into creative and we can first of all adjust the intensity of that um, LUT. So I'm actually gonna lower it down a little bit. It looks a little less intense. And then what you can do to make sure that it's like looking similar is you can go into this little plus icon and then go up into find this little icon here, which is the comparison view. Now I already have it down here in my little toolbar, but press okay, drag it into the toolbar the below, click onto comparison view, and now you have two cameras to play around with. You can look at the one that you're currently editing and then the one that you wanna reference. Now, the reference shot is uh, the first shot that I wanna look at to make sure the colors are similar. So now I basically scrubbed this all the way down to the beginning of my timeline, uh, which where that first epic, dramatic, misty, moody shot is. So let's let's make this a little bit bigger so we can sort of get a better comparison view of this. Um, and now we can sort of see that it's like super shadowy, doesn't match the trees over here. So let's go in, lower the contrast slightly. Then we're gonna go into the shadows and boost up the shadows slightly. Then we're gonna lower the highlights just a tid. And then what we're gonna do is maybe just boost up that, that exposure bit and it's already starting to match a little bit more. Now I actually think this shot has more saturation in it than this one. So I'm gonna go down to the saturation and lower it down slightly, maybe down to 90. And now we can start to see a pretty great resemblance between the two shots. And if you wanted to, since this is actually a higher end camera, we can adjust the saturation or the luma of the sky here to make it a little less blown out and more, let's say, appealing by going into our curves, scrolling down to hue versus luma, clicking onto that, and then dragging it down to making it a little bit darker, or we could you know, blow it out completely, but then that gives us some artifacting. I'm just gonna lower it down a little bit, give us a bit more mood within this scene, just a tad. Perfect. And overall, we can again go into our curves and adjust them slightly, but I think we're looking pretty good. So now what we have is a base layer for two different cameras. So I've matched them somewhat similar. So now if I go into my cell phone or go into my Osmo shot, I can actually have a bit of a profile to click and drag from as opposed to starting from scratch. So I can either choose for my A7 shot, which might match better, or I can choose for my drone. So let's go into the next shot over here. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna paste on that drone profile that we had. Boom, pasted. So there's a bit of a, a, a stark difference yet again between these two shots. And just for kicks, why don't we go in, let's grab the color profile from our A7S and see what that looks different from then, let's say the color profile of our drone. Let's paste that in. And I actually feel like this is a little bit more accurate to what I wanna play with. So let's scale this bad boy in again, using again that first drone shot as our reference, or we even scroll forward and look at our previous shot, which is the Sony a7 III. Now that's something you wanna know about when it comes to coloring your footage, is you want 
Obviously, all the shots to look cohesive and look similar, but more importantly, you want to make sure that your following shots colors correspond with the current shot more than, let's say, the first shot, because your audience's recent memory is more important than their memory of, let's say, the first shot in a series of 20, if that makes sense. So this shot already, if I look at it, it looks a little, little flat. So let's go back into our exposure. Let's lower down our exposure, boost up our contrast. I think we can lower down our exposure a little bit, maybe bring back those bluey tones just slightly. It's getting there. Now what we're gonna do is give it a little bit more saturation. Hang on, hang tight with me. Then we're gonna go into creative, maybe boost up this intensity. You're like, whoa, Zach, it's looking a little cartoony. That's all good. Next thing, go into our curves, make boost up that curvature a little bit. And then what I'm actually gonna do is his skin tones are popping out a lot. It's, it's almost too juicy in comparison to all of the other shots. So I'm gonna go into our hue versus saturation, click onto the eyedropper, click onto most skin here, and then drag down the saturation in his skin tones so that it blends a little bit more. As you can tell, it fits the tone a lot better than what it did before. And then let's go up and I still think that it's a little too bright in these like highlights here. So let's go into the highlights, lower down those highlights. I think we can give it a little bit more contrast punch and you can even give it a bit more of a contrast punch by crunching the blacks a little bit in the shot. Again, you don't want there to be like no detail in the darker areas of the shot. So that works about well. And then finally, I'm actually gonna give it a little bit more of a vignette so we can see it around the frame. Obviously you don't want too intense, but I think something like that looks good. Now finally, just to give you guys a bit of a gander of what this looks like on and off, this is it off, on, off, on. Not bad. Finally, let's copy those Lumetri presets and paste them into the cell phone shot. Now I do think cell phones and GoPros probably have a similar color space, so let's see what happens. Let's open this up slightly. Paste, whoa, super dramatic, but if anything, it looks pretty cool. I mean, this might be a little bit too, little bit too crispy and a little too contrasty, but it's got a really nice flavor on it. Like for a cell phone, like I'm literally amazed right now by the way it looks. Um, so let's go in and adjust this slightly, but I think we've got a cool tone. Uh, I'm gonna lower the contrast just a tad. I'm gonna lower the exposure just a little bit bring out these shadows slightly so we have a bit more detail. I think we're pretty darn close. Now again, this is a this is a really run and gun sort of super fast way to do all this. And if you really wanna go in a little bit deeper dive into the comparison, all you have to do is go into shot or frame comparison. And what you can do is to see what your Lumetri preset does is you can go like this by going into comparison mode, clicking onto this shot or frame comparison, and then dragging over your effect or filter to sort of see what it does. Now that is a, that is a quite a dramatic look. It's very epic, very moody. But now that we have all four of our shots sort of lined up here, we can now kind of go back through our timeline and see well, does it all work cohesively? Does it all have a similar shot flavor and vibe? I think it's looking pretty close. I mean, if anything, this final sort of cell phone shot that we have here might be the most contrasty type shot that we have in here. So we can always go back through and play around with the contrast so that it's all sort of cohesive and it all sort of flows. And again, these are sort of tweaking details. You guys can go through and do the painstaking tweaks. And this is a first sort of stab at doing sort of what a comparison view, color grade and matching a diverse range of cameras looks like. I'm gonna put this back up one sec. So the whole reason why you wanna do this, why you want all of your shots to sort of have a cohesive look, flavor, vibe and whatnot is because whenever it comes to making an edit, the last thing you want is your audience to feel detracted from a scene because a camera sort of stands out to looking very different. Now, the more you can match the color spaces so that they have a similar flavor, the better off your audience is gonna feel less detracted from the scene. Now, if by chance your audience feels like, oh my God, this shot, the coloring just for you isn't working, your audience is standing out, what you can do is make it totally different, super diverse by making it, let's say, black and white. And then that way it's gonna stand out so different that it's a stylistic choice rather than just being this random shot that doesn't fit anywhere because the colors are slightly off, maybe it's too warm, maybe it's too grainy, maybe it's too something. Anyways, hopefully that gives you guys a bit of a helping hand on doing color grading. This is a big video, a long one. 
Hopefully it's not too long and you watched it the whole way through because I do recommend doing this process if you are taking a stab at perfecting your videos and giving them a cohesive flavor and you've shot on multiple different cameras. Let me know what your process is in the comments below. Do you guys use different editing softwares like DaVinci Resolve? So what are some of the tweaks that you do in that process? For me, I like to keep as much as I can within Premiere without going up to third party softwares. So let me know what you guys do, what you thought of this one, and was there something I was missing? Write that in the comments below. I'd love to give it a read. If you guys want a step-by-step -step sort of breakdown and a little bit more of a deeper dive into what I talked about here, there will be a blog post attached to El Video and give you a bit of a verbal description all written down by the fingers of moi. Uh, anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for tuning in. Keep making some great stuff, and I will see you all in another video. Take care.